Thank you everybody for joining us for this panel on what is happening with email engagement. It's a question we're hearing a lot from our clients over the past year and we're going to dive into it in a moment. We'll kick start with a few intros to, to start things off. My name is Kai Isma. I'm Vice President of Customer Success here at Ametria and I'm joined by this wonderful panel so if we can do some intros. Marnie, do you want to kick us off? Uh, I'm Marnie. I uh, head up the e-commerce and digital marketing side of uh, the business at Fred Perry. Uh, hopefully most of you have heard of Fred Perry. Uh, it's kind of an iconic brand. We had a 70-year anniversary last year. And I think we're, we're definitely a brand that sort of spans through sort of multi-generational. We're adopted through different subcultures. Um, so quite a broad audience with quite an iconic product. Perfect. Amy? Well, yeah, you're I'm up. I'm Amy Harmon. I am uh, Head of Customer Marketing at Hotel Chocolat. I'm really sorry there's no chocolate on the table this year. That's <laughs> Kai's fault. Totally my fault. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I think we all know Hotel Chocolat. Um, we're 128 stores now, strong online presence, just relaunched in Japan, and we have another 12 stores launching between now and Christmas. Ooh. So certainly, certainly on the upward trajectory when it comes to retail marketing. So yeah, exciting times. Exciting times for Hotel C. Hannah. Cool. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Sinclair, Director of D2C Retention Marketing and CRM at Steve Madden. Um, for those of you that don't know, Steve Madden is a lifestyle brand. Um, started in the US over 30 years ago, have expanded to 80 different countries and have grown um, all of the brands within our family. So excited to kind of hear what's going on with email marketing because I don't know about you guys but I'd love to have an answer. <laughs> no, no, we're supposed to have the answers. Oh, oh. <laughs> this may be fun. Yeah. Uh, perfect, thank you all for joining us. So I guess we can dive straight into it and I've got a question for you actually Hannah. What have you seen happen to email engagement over this last year and why do you think that is the case for your customer at Steve Madden? Great question. I can say it is down. <laughs> but I can say confidently there are so many macro environments that we know are at play. Same with everyone else. You know, there's been a massive shift to mobile. That's no surprise. But what that means on top of that is the customer is spending less time on a smaller screen. Um, on top of that, we've lost all signals on the mobile device. Thanks, Apple. And with that, what happened is brands are, you know, I agree with the statement, marketers are lazy, myself included. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do yet, so we are oversending, over communicating to the customer to where they're spending less time in the inbox because they're getting so much more and they're going to other channels then to integrate, connect, and talk to brands. And because of that, we're getting less and less response back in the inbox. But I think what's interesting is because she is so, for us it's a she, um, but because consumers are so digitally savvy, we have all these great signals coming in from other partners, Meta, Google, social. Um, SMS, app, um, but because of all that, we can take those opportunities and see how we can really start to communicate to her outside of an inbox. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the thing. We're hearing a lot from brands that are going through this challenge that now is the time to almost look at testing new initiatives, um, invest in other channels that you might not have um, invested in before. But obviously with testing, you've got to find that balance of also hitting hitting your targets. So I guess coming to you next, Amy, with the, these kinds of challenges, how do you go about even predicting um, your forecasts with accuracy? What are the things that you kind of take into consideration as you're testing and learning and navigating this time? I mean, it's tricky, right? I mean, coming into trading meetings at the moment, is, 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 it's, it's a lively debate on a Monday morning. Um, we're quite fortunate in the, at the beginning of last year, we actually built a model to try and predict our, our email revenue, which the way our, our team split is, we have uh, a different person looking after different customer segments. So our model is built around what the segments are, how many emails we think we're gonna send, what the open rate, click-through rate, conversion rate, AOV is by week across the whole year. So it's a real sophisticated um, model that then allows us to predict the revenue we think we're gonna get from each customer cohort per week. And then we effectively are monitoring that every single week and pivoting as things comes in. So if we're finding unsubscribes are really high one week, okay, we need to take down the send volume for that particular cohort if the AOV is down or up and so on and so forth. So this model actually allows us to more accurately predict, but also pivot and adapt as and when we're seeing uh, performance come in versus what, what we expected. And I'm, I'm pleased to say, 
the forecast is currently at 0.7% of accuracy or variance. So it's doing, it's over the course of the year, we've built up quite a lot of intelligence to really be able to understand this is what we think we're going to get from an email channel performance. So, yeah. Perfect. Do you feel that's helping navigate those, those internal conversations, setting expectations? It is because it sets expectation. And we've got the kind of, it's not just a case of going in saying, oh, email's down, goodness, what are we going to do about it? We can mm. actually go in and, and with confidence say, OK, we predict this is going to happen based on data that's happened before. Now we've got the, the, I suppose, the story and the narrative behind it with the accuracy of the data. It allows us to have a, just a more robust conversation. And we also... We have, um, obviously, we're a food and beverage brand. So when we make our products, they have a shelf life. So predicting what we're going to sell, when we're going to sell it, to whom and when is so important, because otherwise we end up in the world of BBE. So therefore, that accuracy, whether it's plus or minus, is so important for us. And as I say, you know, touch hair, wood. We're, um, <laughs> we've got, yeah, 0.7% variance at the moment. So it's, oh. it's working, working well. I definitely advise putting in the hard work up front at the beginning of the year lays the foundations to then make the year just a lot more predictable in a very unpredictable world. Love that. That was a great sound bite. <laughs> um, what are some of the strategies you've um, been testing out, Marnie, given you know, there, is, there is this challenge with customer engagement right now um, at Fred Perry? Yeah, I think um, for us, the shift has been from K KPIs like ROAS to impressions and engagement. I think that idea of spend more, you know, double your marketing budget and you'll double your revenue is kind of, we're, we're sort of shifting away from that and doing what we do best, which is authentic storytelling. And I think the real challenge is um, to diversify the channels, but then, you know, we're, we're quite lucky. We've got the stories, we've got the broad audience, but how do you build a robust YouTube strategy or TikTok strategy or Doyin strategy? So I think for us, uh, this is a year of sort of diversifying, testing and learning different channels for sure mm -hmm. definitely and I think one of the things that always stand, stands out the years that we've worked together with Fred Perry is this focus on storytelling building that sense of community which I think Jason and, and a lot of the talks have talked to right making it more human bringing yeah. the, the authenticity in um, which again gives you the capacity to test different things in different channels uh, for you Amy how are you leveraging other channels outside of email at the moment at Hotel C we, we, we still focus on DM. DM is not dead for us. Um, we particularly catalogue, so we're quite a seasonal business. So at Christmas and Easter, we, we send out catalogues to existing customers. You've got quite a broad range of products to cater for kind of personal consumption or gifting. And so actually the role of catalogues is, is still really important for us. And we do still manage to get quite a high incremental revenue off the back of investing in DM. Um, we also work with, obviously, use the a Metro platform to sync up with Facebook targeting so we can look at targeting lapsed customers, also excluding active customers through your targeting because it's a more efficient way to, to, to get them via email. So yeah, we, we, we spend a lot of time kind of offline as well as um, with app. Uh, the other thing as well is that we're launching hopefully SMS later on this year because I think in the world of where email isn't perhaps the dare I say it, cash cow that it once was, you have to diversify into other channels because you just can't rely on that channel making up the volume that it, that it did before. So hopefully SMS will prove fruit, fruit, fruitful. Love that. And I guess you mentioned some of the channels at the start, Hannah, but what's your kind of plan with testing out, bringing in new initiatives this year? Yeah, absolutely. So we have tied in all of our outreach channels into Ometri actually to funnel our better engagement and segmentation. Um, I'm really excited that we have a new app coming out that we're excited for that's coming in. Um, and then also really linking up TikTok and expanding that um, is going to be a huge unlock for us. We see tons of engagement there, so we're really excited about tying that in. Um, and Ometria, good plug, can allow you to target them based on yeah. those channels. So. Did you rehearse that? Oh. <laughs> Might be a little shameless plug. <laughs> Love that. Um, but I guess that, that does talk to the point, right? When one channel is... Um, not performing as it was, it kind of encourages you to think a little bit more creatively, a little bit more outside the box, try, try new initiatives. Uh, for you, Marnie, how has this current climate encouraged you guys to be more creative in your approach at Fred Perry? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's that thing, budgets just aren't there. Um, so resource and, and pitching for more resources becoming more challenging. 
Uh, we know we started the year, we, we wanted a really strong CRM strategy. Um, and this is going to sound like a plug, but it's not. But uh, we really worked closely with you, Kai, on a couple of initiatives. Um, first, we've actually done previously with you, which is your architect initiative. Um, so we don't have a, you know, three, four person strong CRM team. We're a very lean team. Um, and so we leaned on Ametria and your CRM experts to come in, deep dive, pull out the key metrics and benchmark them against um, similar brand adjacencies and really quickly help us to understand, well, where were we hitting the mark and where were we off the mark? So that was really helpful to do that without having to say, I need a head of CRM. So we answered a lot of questions help, help by tapping into your resource. Uh, and then the second initiative, which was really useful, because I think it's this idea of, you know, this, you know, you, the resilient retailers, you know, to do less but better. And so uh, there's no better area to look at than automations, right? Because essentially you get it right, you set it up, and it sort of runs in the background quite efficiently. And so with your um, Accelerate program, you really quite quickly helped us to pull out what we had from... Um, pre-purchased all the way to post to welcome a whole suite of automations um, and you highlighted you know where were we hitting benchmark where were we not and you gave us some really quick pointers on the things that we can do and then and then we as a brand did the bit that we're really good at is we sort of fill those gaps in with our really authentic storytelling um, so we sort of redesigned our whole suite of automations um, and then you built them for, the, for us and we rolled it out and we managed to do that all in Q1 quite quickly and efficiently without the need of can I have a CRM manager, can I have a CRM coordinator and so on. So I think it's those types of creative ways to lean into the partners that you work with um, that are going to help us in these sort of difficult times. And thank you for sharing about Architect and Accelerate. If any of you would like I to... I haven't been paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you do want to find out more about it, just, um, just um, ask us uh, later on when you see us. Um, but yeah, perfect. I guess we've talked a lot today about, you know, some of the other things that have happened over the years that have just contributed to this being a really challenging time. We've mentioned some of them today. Apple privacy uh, challenges, inflation, cost of living crisis over here, and war. How have you been navigating all of that, all of that noise to make sure you can still cut through it and reach your customer or reach her, Hannah, um, at Steve Madden? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, it's not easy, but I just wanna let you all know, we're gonna be okay, we're gonna get through <laughs> it. <laughs> um, retail is resilient, it does hang out. Um, but really it's because we do know our customer is full omni-shopping, you know, that whole sexy word for marketing of omni-channel, it is true. And so making sure our marketing teams are communicating back and forth. If we're seeing a shoe trending on TikTok, we know that we need to go ahead and shoot it in studio for a campaign a week or two later, knowing that it's going to live its life cycle and it's going to get its moment. And sharing that across all channels has allowed us to become very nimble, but very quick to real time marketing. Um, that has allowed us to really kind of amplify our engagement across the board. Um, the other thing that's really interesting is because of that, we're always testing. So always sharing our insights up and down the funnel. Um, you know, is our customer responding to messages in different channels? For example, if she's on her phone on TikTok, our SMS campaigns are gonna call out TikTok, but in email where she's more likely to be on desktop, we're just gonna call out a basic social channel um, mm -hmm. because it's gonna be different bases on where she's engaging. So there's been tons of testing on our side and sharing that information back and forth is how we're really beating kind of the overall trend right now in mm -hmm. the market. Um, but again, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a, a little therapy session exactly. for us all up here. Retail it? therapy. It's yeah, right. retail therapy. <laughs> Love that, perfect. Um, I guess one of the phrases that we often hear banded around, and it can be very frustrating, especially for our, for our head of deliverability, who isn't actually here today, but the phrase email is dead. Obviously, we, we wouldn't all be here if that was, if that was true. Um, but we know that you know, now is probably the most challenging time for that channel. Um, but there is still some opportunities to cut through that noise. Um, for you, Amy, any, any major initiatives or key campaigns that have worked really, really well for you during this time? Yeah, there's, 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 there's a couple, really. Um, actually, one of the things that we did this year is partner with Adichie. Um, 
we're doing a lot more with those guys in terms of interactiveness within email. So as you've already said, it's really hard to cut through. Like even, even me as a consumer, like I'm sick to death of the emails I get from all the different <laughs> brands and yet here I am doing the same thing. Um, and, and being able to cut through is, it's just, it's just harder, right? It's just harder and harder and harder. And so one of the things that we, we, we did is work with Adichie to try and do some interactive kind of gamification with email. So rather than just saying, hey, here's a, an offer of 10% off or, or whatever it might be, you know, there's a little bit of fun in there where it's scratch to reveal or tap to reveal, you know, just that little bit of extra engagement actually better connects with the customer. But also when they, you know, there's more intent because they're engaging with it, therefore, they're more likely to go and do something with that offer. We've also, um, earlier on this year, we launched a drinking chocolate quiz. Really simple quiz where it's kind of finding your flavor love match to, um, we, we have a range of 18 flavors, so it's what's the right one for you. And that just absolutely blew the doors off of, 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 of our expectations, really. I mean, we, we had just over 80% 80, 80 completion rate. So that's 80% of people that have gone from email actually then completed the quiz. So. Now you're in a world where not only have you got those people engaging, you now know what flavour they like, we know what desserts they like, we know what time of day they like drinking chocolate, which that data enrichment then allows us to retarget for future campaigns as well. Um, and also within those quiz, we've actually managed to take that into our offline channels as well, actually physically into the store. So we have interactive screens within um, our stores. And so we've managed to upload that quiz into store. So now not only is it something that we're using with an email, actually customers are going in and interacting with the screen. So therefore we're capturing data. We're able to help the customer navigate, find the right flavor. And then of course we get the data and can reserve um, customer journeys off the back of that all through kind of what isn't an out of the box solution. I promise the you haven't paid me. Um, I'm sitting there like, ha oh, ha, yeah, thanks Amy. Um, but generally, you know, we're, we're able to stand these things up kind of in, in days because it is all out of the box. And yeah, it's, that's, that's working well for us in, in cutting through. Mm -hmm. Bonus question. Um, mm -hmm. For some of the, the brands in the room, it can be really hard to also convince, you know, mm -hmm. stakeholders internally to try new things when you've got these revenue targets and when you're trying to, you know, be conscious of brand, how do you, how do you build that into, you know, selling these concepts internally? Do you have to? Yeah, yeah, I like anything, you know, particularly at the moment, you know, we have a budget, but, you know, we're still going back to the board and almost seeking permission to spend the budget that we always have, particularly, you know, I don't suppose there's a person in this room at the moment that's not sitting there thinking, oh my God, it's extra budget and I can't get extra budget. Um, because we'd built the model that I was talking about earlier that kind of predicted what revenue we think we're going to get. Because we'd seen click-through rates, that's been our biggest challenge this year. It's actually not opens, it's not conversion, it's, it is actually click-through rates. Because that model was so clear and transparent, we were able to say, okay, by losing a half a percent of click-through rate over the year, that's going to translate to X amount of email revenue that is at risk, which then formulated the, base, the business case to say, well, actually, there's a, a million pound gap here, um, which then allowed us to unlock the investment to bring on board a partner like Adichie. So again, it goes back to as long as you've got the right metrics and you can kind of plan and predict where you think your revenue is going to come and what's driving that, the kind of so what behind it, it makes it a lot easier to kind of then forecast risk and then use that risk to unlock investment. And that's, that's, that's the, the rhythm that we certainly go through at, at HC, which has, has been able to yeah, unlock investment. I feel like you're going to get a lot of questions about this, this model that you've built. <laughs> I'm really hoping you're going to be able to automate it for me, so we don't need to build <laughs> in Excel. <laughs> We're working on it. Where's Marco? Um, <laughs> awesome. So I guess to kind of round off the discussion, a um, bit of a fun question, um, and one that hopefully this will let everyone walk away with a few pearls of wisdom. If you were to, say, go back in time, give yourself one piece of advice ahead of going into this crazy, crazy time and plan for how you can navigate um, the challenge with email engagement, what would it be? I guess if we come to you first, Marnie. Um, I would say, I think we definitely took our foot off the gas with email as a channel. I feel like GDPR was a really big distraction and you know, sort of put us off the channel as a whole. Um, so I'd probably go back and just say, you know, that sort of the so the t today, you know, the importance of that first party data strategy, that direct to consumer um, engagement and communication is key. So I think uh, 
probably sticking with email and, and sort of um, keeping with it. Whereas, I, where, whereas the journey we took was sort of that softening and now we're, we're back in and you know, we're now saying, well, it's email and it's SMS, but that any opportunity for direct communication and keeping that, um, I think in hindsight, that would have been quite useful. Perfect. Yeah. And Amy? I think <clears throat> if I could go back in time, I think there's a piece around kind of we're not alone. So when we started to see kind of our engagement rates, particularly click-through rates going down, you know, there's a lot of, God, what are we doing wrong? Or what, our emails aren't performing. What are we doing? Is it our product? Is it our customer? There was a lot of inward looking. I think it took a, a bit of time to kind of actually reach out to you guys and say, well, what's the market doing? What are other brands doing in our vertical? And, and then you kind of realise, hey, we're not alone. This is, this is actually a, a broader thing that's happening across all of retail. And then, you know, you take quite a lot of comfort in the, okay, it's not us. It's not just an issue isolated to us. It's, it's a, 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 say, a market-wide thing. And I think taking comfort in that just allows you just to be a little bit more, not kind of sit back and relax, but certainly know that it's not just you. You know, and I think that would have been, probably would have saved a few sleepless nights and some difficult trading meetings <laughs> had, had <laughs> I have known that back then. <laughs> Absolutely. And Hannah? a good question <laughs> there's so much um i mean all customers came online like user identification and scoreability looking back would have been phenomenal three years ago um because now we would have known who was the right person to go back after um but you know you can always start now and that's something we're still doing which is good um so that we can be smarter on how do we talk forward um, and then also, too, just having all of those touch points and data, utilizing it all the way through the funnel from the beginning. So having those automations set up to trigger from, hey, if you're coming from SMS, I'm assuming you're a mobile customer who's mm -hmm. under the age of 30, I'm going to talk to you differently. And having all of those experiences set up right out of the get-go would have, you know, to sleepless night comments, oh my gosh, that would have been amazing. We've yeah. been there. It's fine. It'll <laughs> be great. It'll be great. Yeah. Like we said, retail, retail yeah. therapy. Retail therapy. Um, and it will all be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So we've covered quite a bit. Um, and I guess, yeah, if anyone in the room has found challenges with email engagement, which I'm sure many of you have, Hopefully, a lot of um, interesting insight you can take away from, from today's panel. Please do come and grab any of the lovely panelists uh, later today. If you want to find out more um, about what they've been up to, give them a follow on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, thank you all for, for joining us. That brings us to the end of the panel. <laughs>